Hello, and welcome to this ANSYS Innovation Space course titled Understanding Polycrystals in Crystal Plasticity Analysis. In this first lesson, we will cover a short overview of crystal plasticity to prepare you for the following workshops. Metals are widely used in today's engineering structures. Invisible to the naked eyes, the metal atoms have different microscopic arrangements and orientations, which are called the microstructures. In this figure, we show an example of a microstructure observed under optical microscope. Microstructures directly affect the mechanical properties, such as the use stress and ductility of the engineering component. And in this video, we'll learn about microstructures and how we can understand the relationship between microstructures and properties through crystal plasticity analysis. First, what is a microstructure? Microstructure carries information on the microscopic orientation and alignment of metal atoms. It can have many grains, and a grain is a group of atoms with identical spatial orientation. Here in this image, we highlight a grain within a larger microstructure. Then the interfaces between different grains are called grain boundaries. In this image here, we show the grain boundary of a grain. Each grain in the microstructure is characterized by their spatial orientation, which can be measured experimentally by a technique called electron backscatter diffraction, or EBSD. Here we show an example EBSD measurement image obtained from experiments. Then how should grain orientation be represented? Orientation is typically expressed by Euler angles, which are a sequence of three angles to describe the orientation of a body with respect to a fixed coordinate system. It represents three sequential rotations in a coordinate system fixed to the moving body. We adopt the commonly used Z, X, Z format, meaning that the first and last rotation is about the local Z axis, while the second rotation is about the local X axis. Here we show an example. In this image here, we show a 90, 90, 90 Euler angle. We first rotate a body around the z-axis by 90 degrees. Then we rotate around the new x-axis by 90 degrees, and finally around the updated z-axis by another 90 degrees to arrive at the final orientation. Next, we can introduce the concept of crystal structures. Within each grain, the metal atoms are highly ordered and packed in a particular pattern. This packing pattern is known as the crystal structure and is dependent on the type of the metal atom. Some common crystal structures and typical examples include the face center cubic FCC, which is found in aluminum and copper, or body center cubic or BCC, which is found in iron, and finally hexagonal closed pack or HCP, which is found in magnesium. Next, we can discuss the concept of plastic deformation. When the load exceeds the yield stress, metals show permanent deformation called plastic deformation. In this video here, we show that the paper clip is deformed and does not return to its original shape when released, showing permanent deformation. Microscopically, this is due to the permanent relative motion between different metal atoms, known as slipping. Metal atoms inside a grain is highly ordered and slip occurs in preferential directions in the grain known as slip directions. Slip directions depend on the crystal structure and the orientation of each grain, and there are lines of the highest atomic packing density. In this figure here, we show an example of one of the slip directions in an FCC unit cell. And similarly, the planes of highest atomic packing density are called slip planes. And here we show an example of a slip plane. A set of slip direction and slip plane is known as a slip system. Each crystal structure have multiple slip systems and slip system availability depends on temperature. Then we can begin to introduce crystal plasticity. To account for the local effects of microstructure on the plastic deformation, we use a crystal plasticity model. It uses information of each grain in the microstructure, including the crystal type, grain shape, and crystal orientation. 
The material model calculates the amount of slip accumulated in each slip system due to the applied load and relates that to the amount of plastic strain developed in the material. The amount of slip or plastic strain depends on the crystal structure and orientation as well as the applied load magnitude and direction. Now, when should we consider using a crystal plasticity model? Let's look at a comparison of scales. If we're dealing with engineering structures that are significantly larger than the microstructure, then local microstructure effects are unimportant, and we can use continuum plasticity models like bilinear isotropic hardening. However, on the other hand, if the structure size is comparable with the size of the grains, then the local influence of the microstructure is important, and crystal plasticity models should be used. In general, we should consider using a crystal plasticity model when you have information on the microstructure and would like to understand how this microstructure affects the mechanical properties at larger scales. Or you want to find a microstructure that achieves the desired material properties. Or the length scale of the component is close to the size of the grains. Or the microstructure becomes important to the physics of the problem. Summarize, in this lesson, we learned that metal atoms form highly organized groups known as grains, and grains of different shapes and crystal orientations form a microstructure. Slip inside the grain is the microscopic mechanism for plastic deformation. And slip occurs on slip systems, which are preferential directions inside the grain and changes with crystal structure and orientation. And finally, crystal plasticity model captures the slip on all available subsystems and relates that to the plastic strain of the component.